Hey, what's up, y'all? This is your girl, Carla Alexander, here with Keeping It Real. Yes. So, my friend and I were talking the other day, and both of us have grown children, we have grandchildren, and we're both kind of at a stalemate. Well, not so much me, because you know, I have been going on this crazy quest of trying to find myself. The question today is, what do we do after children? What do we do after children? You know, some of us have jobs, you know, nine to five. Some of us were able to get it together in their 20s. I was not that woman. I was a stay at home mom. So basically, I guess only the stay at home moms would really understand this video. <clears throat> you know, when you've spent how many years being a devoted mom, devoted wife, and you don't really get a chance to think about what are you going to do when the kids leave because if you have multiple kids it's always a graduation there's holidays there's there's always something that needs to be done with the kids and then one day you wake up and they're grown and now they don't need you anymore so you're like what do i do i don't know what to do and i think that was kind of what was happening to me i I think that I was so busy being caught up being a mom, you know, that when we moved to Georgia and we all started kind of branching out and going in our separate direction, I was kind of left feeling lonely because I'm like, wait, what happened? One minute they're little and the next minute they're moving out the house. Basically, I had to go, you know, through the process of, well, what am I going to do with myself? And that was when I started my YouTube channel. I know I've been all over the place just trying to figure it out, but it's been one hell of a journey. I've enjoyed myself, you know, through the ups and downs, and it's been my therapy. Let's just say that. It's been my therapy. All of the different things that I've tried to say, okay, this is what I want to do, or do I really want to commit to that, or, you know, just going through the, the motions, I finally have given into the whole cooking thing, which is what I love to do. I love to do it. And once I stopped making the thought of being a cook, you know, a sore point and made it a good thing, I guess I want to say the culinary world has opened up to me and it's like I've fallen in love with food all over again. I'm just... I'm such a, I'm, I'm a better cook. I'm more confident now when I'm doing my catering. And it's actually, it's turning around and it's making me feel like I'm actually on the right path. I took something that was a source of pain for me and I completely flipped it around. I just gave into it. I gave into the idea that, you know what, maybe it's not such a bad idea because out of all the other things that I'm really good at, I'm not passionate about any one of them as much as I am passionate about cooking. So that's what I want to do. That's what I'm going to spend the rest of my life doing. That's what I'm going to do five years down the line, 10 years down the line, God willing, you know, 30 years down the line. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to spend the rest of my life doing. I love it. And it's not just about putting together ingredients. It's about creating a sense of well-being you know that comfort when a person eats my food it makes me feel good it took <laughs> such a long time maybe had i listened to this inner voice maybe maybe things would have been different i don't know i don't know all i know is that i'm on the right path i am coming out of my depression things are finally starting to settle. I feel like with all the chaos and all the animosity and the indecisiveness and what I'm supposed to do, I feel like for the first time in three years that things are finally coming together for me. And it is a slow process. It's a very slow process. But people like my food and that makes me happy. So I'm like, yay! So anyway, my friend who is a, she's a fitness buff like me, 
and she wanted to, to personal, you know, do personal training at one point because every time she worked out, everybody would stop her and ask her what she was doing. You know, could could they follow her? You know, could, and she'd take her time out with, you know, helping people get into shape. You know, walking with them, train. You know, uh, meeting them at the gym. Like she really is really good at this. But she said to me the other day, she goes, "I don't want to do that. I don't want to do it anymore." And I said, "Okay." She goes, "I'm tired." She was like, I want to be able to enjoy food. I says, I've never, ever told anybody in life when I'm training them to deprive themselves of things that they want because it makes the, it makes the journey to losing weight that much more difficult when you feel like you can't have something. So you can have something. I always tell her, have it in moderation. Even with the strictest, the strictest diet, still have what you want because you deserve something that's gonna make you feel good. And food makes people feel good, right? Personal training, chef, personal training. Uh. Anyway, she had called me one day and said, I know what I wanna do. I was just sitting here and it just came to me. It was like all of a sudden and I was like, yeah, I know that feeling, I know that feeling. What's the idea? Let's hear it. And she's actually going to start her own company, you know, and I'm not going to get into the details because that's for her to be able to tell it. But when she finally does drop those whatever, when she finally does decide to start her YouTube channel or, you know, her IG account, whatever, I'm definitely going to tell you about it. But for right now, just being able to feel a sense of purpose after your kids are gone and you haven't had time to really nurture your passions because I know I haven't I've really been just very busy with trying to keep up with my kids and it's been really difficult because I've always been broke you know when you have a lot of kids and you're a single parent yeah you stay broke but you know you always manage to get food on the table that was always the necessity but for me it was just about how I could make the poorest meal taste the best. And, and I said to her, you finally have a purpose. Okay, let's go. Let's just do it. Because now, not only do you have the passion that it's going to take to move yourself in the direction that you want to go in, but you have somebody who's already gone through all of the hardest parts, which is basically building the YouTube channel up, you know, getting the Instagram, getting, you know, the, the, produc the production of the videos out. It's been really, it's, it's, it's fortunate that I had to go through the hard work so that other people don't have to go through the hard work because it's so frustrating. And we ain't got time for that. Nobody got time to be frustrated. So when you think about what you want to do after the kids are out the house and you're left feeling old you're left feeling old you don't have to be you just have to reach deep down and really decide what you want to do and just do it and it's not going to be easy i've made a lot of mistakes but i think the best part about the journey that i am on is that when i do have the opportunities to make the recordings i am showing you my progress and i'm owning that if I don't put the videos up, then I'm like, okay, well, I don't have to be responsible. And I don't want that to be the way I think. I want to be responsible. This is the reason why I share my stories. This is the reason why I share the ugly parts of my life. Because everybody has them. There's nobody on this planet that is perfect. And knowledge and experience, it's about sharing it and moving or paying it forward so that other people can not make the same mistakes. You know, it was a hard, it was, it was very one-sided and I had to sacrifice a lot and I would hate for another female to have to be as young as I was and feel manipulated and go into a a situation that you really don't have a clue about and then be stuck because it's not fun you can't come away from it right away and then yeah I, I just want to be the voice of reason for somebody let's put it like that okay 
moving on. So anyway, so now my friend is got all of this great steam. She has decided that she wants to move forward in her life. And her thing was, she, she finally admitted that, you know, she feels a little insecure. You know, you see all these younger women on, you know, YouTube channels and on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and all that. And they're doing this and they're doing that. And you know what? You can't worry about that because at some point in time, those young girls are going to be us. So don't worry about that. I told her, let's let's just let's just get you out there. Let's just let let's see let's let the world see who you are. You know, and worry about all that little stuff later. There's always gonna be a niche for someone, you know. So what we can't drop it like it's hot. I mean I know I can't. I'm not even trying to drop it like it's hot. But we still have purpose. Being a part of the universe, which is one of my biggest things that I try to maintain as part of my spirituality, you get to get things answered if you really ask, if you're really asking for it and listen. And when I first started going through my spiritual awakening, I was completely freaked out. There were things that I couldn't explain. I felt like I was going completely crazy. You know, I had nights where I would be like bawling because I had so much going on inside my brain, I couldn't stop it. Because it's like, yo, it's like a door of knowledge just opens up. And <clears throat> I guess I was so busy fighting myself because I'm like, no, like all this new information is, is too much. You know, I don't want to own that. I need to stay right here in my safe little bubble. And after a while, little kid that lives inside of me she disappeared somewhere and all of a sudden all of this new stuff just came in and when i when i finally surrendered and said you know what that's it i'm just gonna just surrender to the universe you know god here take the wheel just take it once i did that it was like yo things started to change but my problem was a habit is still a habit whether it's a good habit or a bad habit is still a habit and I still had a very bad habit of remembering to keep my faith because I've seen what happens when you have it. Sometimes you get so stuck on the reality of what you can see, you know, and not remember, don't give in to that fear. I've been doing it for the last, what, since I've been here, I've been giving into my fear. I've been giving into my fear. I haven't done any videos. You know, my daughter and I were constantly at each other's throats. Then uh, the hot flashes started. You know, then it was just, it was horrible. And I didn't know how to fix it because I'm like, I don't understand what is going on. Why? What is going on? Why is it that I can't move myself? Why can't I get up and work out? Why can't I get up and do a video? Why can't I get up and do this? You know, everything is based on money, 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 money. Got to figure out how you're going to make this money. Got to figure out how you're going to make this rent. Because I am so used to being in panic mode, that fight or flight mode, that that's all I think about because I'm like, I don't want to get evicted. You know, I don't want to be this. I don't want to be that. So my mind does this. It just keeps going in the same direction. And I'm like, yo, I got to stop. What can I do? So I went into the basement and I found my studies. It was just right there. It was just right there. I couldn't believe it. I had been looking for this stuff. I had been talking about this stuff for months, but when I go down in the basement, it just wasn't available to me. I couldn't find it. So it was like, whatever. And I just kept forgetting about it. And it just clicked on me. It just clicked to me. I forgot. I forgot. And at least this time, it only took me July, August, September, October. This time, it only took me three months to figure it out, as opposed to three years, as opposed to 20 years. You know what I'm saying? So it's definitely progress for me. And the moment I started back with my studies, sh things just started changing. Just like a day or two later, just things just, just have been just changing. And I'm like, what the heck? But I forgot, it's the universe. When you listen, the universe will give you what you're asking for. You just, one, you gotta be hella patient. Two, you have to listen. And I keep saying, don't listen with the ears, to listen with your heart. You have to listen with your heart. 
leave a comment you know if you guys know what i'm talking about i would love to hear how you guys have figured this out because like i said it took me forever to figure it out anyway yes one more thing i need to understand where are all my menopausal women at okay i'm gonna need you all to come out of hiding and start telling stories on how you feel when you're going through these hot flashes because we don't have enough women talking about it my neighbor and i are going through the exact same symptoms and it's crazy she's white i'm black totally different backgrounds and we're both going through the exact same symptoms it's frustrating because she said the same thing to me why don't enough why aren't more women talking about these things i said i don't know because we are suffering and we are suffering in silence and I, it, it, it felt really really good to know that there was somebody else out here who was going through the same thing as me because I didn't feel quite alone you shouldn't have to feel alone if you're going through this stuff this is crazy how your body just heats up and now you're going through a hot flash you're sweaty and then you're cold at the same time you know Freaking during the winter time, I already know what I'm gonna look like, okay? When I have a hot flash outside, I'm gonna freaking look like I'm having an outer body experience because all the steam that's gonna come off my body once I start peeling off the clothes at 32 degree weather, okay? People are gonna, I'm gonna go, that's when I'm gonna go viral because people are thinking my soul literally left my body. It's just crazy. So we need to talk about this. This needs to be something that more women are aware of this is not what your mom is telling you i don't know what my mom was telling me yo this is anyway this is what i said to my daughter my mother i watched my mother go through the hot flashes she never said a word she never complained she she suffered in silence and i'm here to say this is some bullshit so you know what i do i i partake in the weed okay i partake in the the ganja but for the ones who don't want to smoke, you know, who would prefer natural supplements, yo, let me know. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys are doing to help with these horrible, horrendous, horrendous hot flashes. I want to know what you guys are doing naturally. I need more ideas. There are other women out here that would love to know what you guys are doing. Because, like I said, not enough of us are talking. So, talk. I know, um... My, my neighbor said that there was something called DHEA that works. I haven't really done any research on that, so I'm going to try and ask her about it. But she does acupuncture and she does Chinese herbs. And I know Chinese herbs works because my mom used to do, um, used to do Chinese herbs. But she goes down to Chinatown, she gets these select herbs for, you know, menopause. She does that and she says that pretty much helps her, you know. Um, so yeah, whatever you guys are doing, let me know. Leave me a comment below. I want to know what y'all are doing. And yoga helps. I do. I haven't been doing yoga too much. I should be doing more yoga. I've just been so stressed, I want to say, you know. But um, I think I'm in a space now where I'll be able to get myself back on track, you know, physically and get this whole bodybuilding idea that I've been holding on to for years underway you know it's just gonna take you know take some time because again I have so many things that I'm trying to do because I have a lot of making up to do and I think that's what it is I have a lot of making up to do I've spent the last 20 years raising kids and doing what needed you know needed to be done for them so yeah I am all over the place yeah so my videos are still going to be about cooking. They're still going to be about you know, us talking because you guys, like I said, you guys are my therapy and it's it's a good thing for me because then it, it's telling me I'm going I'm on the right track. You know, I may not post all the time like I want, but it's always on my mind. And that's what I needed. I needed to constantly be on my mind so that I don't forget that this is a part of who I am. And this is a part of the part of me that I like. So my message to you guys is don't let anybody tell you that you cannot 
recreate. It's never too late to recreate who you are. Even if you have to go back into things that you used to love as a child, you know? I mean, for me, when I thought, when I think about it, I've always cooked. I've always cooked. That's just, my father was a chef. And I guess even though we, you know, I wasn't raised around him, it is a part of me. And because I love it so much, I could see myself making money from it. I can see myself doing this for the rest of my life. You know, I mean, people got to eat, right? I know I got to eat, but it's more than that. You just got to look deep inside of who you are and figure it out. If you've been at your job for 20 years and you don't like it anymore, quit. Do something you love. Fuck it. I know it's easier said than done because I'm broke. I don't have anything to lose. But I guess that's the only good thing about the situation and the way it's been. Because in this process, I have been truly, truly humbled. Truly humbled. And I have a new understanding and a new respect for food. I finally have the type of connection with the universe that I need to sustain who I am for me and my energy. I can't speak for everybody else, only me. And I'm willing to work on myself physically because I deserve to be strong. I deserve to look as young as I possibly can. And I'm not gonna keep beating up on myself because of the mistakes I've made. So if you're doing that, let, those, let, let it go. Let it go. It's time to move on. It's time to recreate who you are. Be anybody who you want to be. I don't care what anybody says. If you want to be Daffy Duck, be Daffy Duck. Fuck it. But just be what's going to make you happy because everybody says it. So I'm, I'm going to say it. You literally only have one life to live and you don't know. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. We know this. And when you get to a certain age in time, you're going to start to realize by the time you hit 45, time changes it moves way faster oh like you know saggy boobies and droopy balls gravity takes hold and you can't get away from it people are gonna say things to you that's gonna hurt you and they're gonna use every single tactic they can think of just to bring you down but the only person that truly has control over that is you and I'm telling you, I wasted 20 years holding on to that thought of what he said I was. Because I wanted to be more than that. And I already am, and I just didn't see it. I refused to see past his hurtful words. So, like I said, don't do that. You guys already know what to do. Like and subscribe to my channel. I am... Again, Carla Alexander, and I am, again, keeping it real. And I am sorry that I don't have better lighting, but I gave my daughter my light because she's doing a, a video of my other daughter's hair. So, yeah. Today is a good day. <laughs>